Are you about to have your surgery and taking a GLP-1 medication like trizepatide or semiglutide and you're not sure whether to stop it or not? I'm Dr. Sarah Saxon, double board certified facial plastic surgeon. And in this video, I'll talk about the latest information we have about when to stop your medication and my personal recommendations for my patients. My goal is to prepare you for your surgery and have the safest outcomes possible. First of all, both semiglutide and terzepatide are GLP-1 agonists, and terzepatide works in addition to stimulating another receptor called GIP. There are some people on these medications for diabetes, but in my clinic, I mostly see people who are on them for weight loss. And what these medications do is slow gastric emptying, meaning slow the release of food from your stomach, it makes you feel full a lot longer, which also helps with appetite control. So that's a nice perk of that medication. It also sensitizes your insulin receptors to have insulin work better and also stimulates insulin secretion. So in many different ways, these medications are quite powerful in helping us lose weight. The reason why most people generally stop these medications before surgery is the component that slows down emptying of your stomach. When you are undergoing general anesthesia, there are medications that you get that relax the sphincters or basically the valves that hold food in your stomach so that it doesn't go up your esophagus, into your mouth, and possibly down your windpipe. If you get food in your airway, you run the risk of pneumonia. And this we find is a risk with medications like terzepatide because even though we tell you not to eat or drink anything after midnight, the night before surgery, if you have terzepatide in your system, it may not give you time for your stomach to empty before your surgery. Most ambulatory surgery centers and anesthesiologists are recommending that you stop terzepatide and semiglutide about a week before your surgery. And that allows enough of the medication to get out of your system to where your stomach can have the better opportunity of emptying. Now, the half-life of terzepatide is five days, so technically it's still in your system about a month. So there are some physicians I've seen in online forums who have had patients who said they have been off the medication for a month and still developed aspiration pneumonia. So there's a lot that we don't know about this medication and we don't have a lot of data with large numbers of patients quite yet. So where are we at with the data? There was a study that came out in late 2024 from the American Society of Anesthesiologists pointing out that there's some nuance in the risk of being on these medications and having elective surgery. One is that if you're in a ramp up phase, meaning you're increasing the dose week by week or month by month, you're at increased risk of having reflux of gastric contents at the time of your surgery. Some of the GI side effects start to wear off as you've been on the medication a lot longer. And so those first few months that you're on it, you're at increased risk of aspiration if you're taking trisepatide before your surgery. Also, if you're on higher doses, you're at increased risk. So if you've been on the medication long-term and you're at a stable dose, or if you're on a maintenance low dose, you're at less risk than someone who is at a high dose or is ramping up their dosing. There's some other studies from the orthopedic literature that do show increased risk of aspiration if you don't take it off. So some studies show that you may be able to take it by a case-by-case -case basis or even stay on the medication under certain circumstances, and others are still saying you should discontinue the medication before surgery. So where do we go from here? Why the data all over the place? One reason is that everyone's getting their medication from all different sources. There are some compounding pharmacies online that people are sourcing it from. There are some med spas. Now that the medications have come off the shortage list, that's starting to change, but not quite yet. I think that we don't have a good understanding of exactly what the patient is taking because some people are also even managing their doses themselves, which is a little scary. So for me, my patients are all elective. I am a facial plastic surgeon, so 
All of my patients are cosmetic, so I err on the side of the utmost safety because what I do is not life or death. I want to eliminate as many risks as possible. I don't want to overburden a patient by overly aggressive guidelines, but I also don't want to be on the more conservative side either. So for me, I have all of my patients stop either trisepatide or semiglutide about two weeks before surgery. Now, like I said, the half-life is five days, so you're still gonna have medication in your system, but enough has worn off at that point to where I feel safe performing surgery on you. So I've reached some of my own conclusions in reviewing the literature recently. And for me, if you're having an elective cosmetic procedure, I would stop the medication between two and four weeks before your surgery, especially if you don't have diabetes. If you do have diabetes and you need it to control your blood sugar, if you're on a stable dose, then there is likelihood that you could stay on your medication, but the safest thing would be to bridge to a different diabetes medication prior to your surgery that's shorter acting. Now, if you have an emergency, say you get in a car accident or you are in the hospital and need to go straight to the operating room for whatever reason, I don't want you to be nervous about taking this medication. There are ways that anesthesiologists can change how they're inducing anesthesia to keep it a little bit safer, even though you might be on a higher dose. I hope this sheds some light and clarity on the situation. I love both terzepatide and semiglutide. I've had a lot of patients have quite significant success with it. And working with you to manage those medications in and around your surgery time is very important for me because I want you to continue to be successful.